good morning and welcome to enough of jack's vlog and it is absolutely freezing this morning it was minus three overnight and it's not meant to get much warmer during the day although the sun is meant to make an appearance um hopefully it might just bring the temperature up a little bit but we're in the heart of winter and i'm on shearwater lake and for those of you that know it it is a stunning lake it's about 30 acres inside you've got a shallow end just over my shoulder there and then you've got the dam wall just over my shoulder there and it drops down to about 27 foot it has actually been closed over the last couple of years since covid they haven't reopened it so for about two years it's had no pressure it can do good things when it reopens it's only open in the last couple of weeks it could either fish its nuts off or it could go really cagey with all that sudden pressure on the lake and i'm pretty sure it has done a few bites um but i don't know what it's done in the last week so um like i say it could go either to, to one or two ways and it's a lake that i've got a lot of experience on i started cart fishing pretty much on this lake um, about 20 21 years ago so and I fished it on and off all throughout that time. So I'll have a relatively good idea of where to start this time of the year. I say I'm not hopeful because of the conditions. It's really, really cold. It's Baltic. Um, but on the other hand, I have had some really good winter sessions on here. So hopefully I'm going to get all three rods out now. Just let that car go past. I'm going to get all three rods out now. I'm going to put two on solid bags potentially. And then one I'm going to have roving around on a single hook bait. And hopefully try and locate the carp. And then I'll sort of come up with a plan from there. So let's get the rods out. Well, there's the three that I'm going to be putting out there. I decided not to go for solid bags just because I want to be recasting all three rods every 20 to 25 minutes till I locate the rods. As far as I'm aware, you can't use leaders on here. So I can't get them pre-tied, um, pre-tie up, ready to go. So to reduce the hassle and reduce the time I'm going to have the rods out of water, I'm going to be using PVA mesh full of pellets on the hook points. And I've gone with two on a German rig, uh, sorry, one on a German rig, two on a Ronnie rig. And I've put all three on different coloured baits on the NS1 dumbbells. And the idea of that, say if I get a bite on the yellow, I'll be then moving one of these over to the yellow as well. If I then get another bite on the yellow, I'll be putting all three out on the yellow um, and sort of get two in the area of where I've had the bite and leave one roving. Hopefully, you know, when you get a, when you get a bite in winter, it's usually a telltale sign that there's more in the area and that could be potentially where they're holding up. So it's always good if you do get a bite, then to move two rods into the same sort of area uh, because you know that that's on experience in that's usually the way sort of winter fishing goes. They sort of all congregate in sort of a big group, but that's the lake. It's looking absolutely gorgeous and as typical got the rod rest there but i forgot to change over my butt rest to cork handles so they're just going to be resting there on the ground splayed out so but anyway let's get the rods out Well, that's all three rods out now. I've got them out going to go into three sort of different areas in the lake at different sort of ranges. And I'm just going to keep recasting them every 25, 30 minutes. But no doubt I'm going to get questions on what these rods are and they are absolutely gorgeous. They're coming out very, very soon or they will be out at the time this goes out. And these are the Crosscast Traditionals. Just get a bit of a closer look here. The crosscast tr traditionals and these are the 12 foot three and a half pound test cov like i say i thought i was going to be chucking some big solid bags today um but it turns out at the moment that i'm not going to i might change over later we'll see but that's why i've got the three and a half with me because it gives me that option of casting some big solid bags got a nice cork handle a very slim profile bank and they do we do these in 10 foot, 12 foot and 13 foot of the options as well. So definitely go check those out. And I've got them paired up with a very gorgeous, soon to be released. That should be coming in the next few weeks, if not months, a Crosscast 45 SCW QD02. And a lot of people have been asking for us to do a gold version Crosscast. And these are gonna be them, absolutely stunning. Slow cross wrap, 
and they are a QDM feature. So they feature our new drag system, which is QDM. So instead of half a turn from locked to free spool, it's actually a full turn. So it gives you a little bit more freedom, a little bit more play in the drag to get it set just as you want it. Absolutely stunning. Hopefully the fish are gonna play ball and we're gonna catch a few fish today. In last month's vlog, we ran a giveaway for one lucky winner to win a one of our Black Widow low-level free rod pods. And the winning comment for this giveaway was Andy Draycott. So Andy, congratulations. Drop me a message on Instagram at Jack Wheeler Fishing and we'll get the prize sent over to you as soon as we can. Well, it's been a couple of hours now since I last spoke to you and nothing really has happened. I haven't seen anything show. And I haven't seen anyone else catch on the lake. I've got a pretty good view here of all the other anglers on the far bank and on the down wall and so far nothing has really happened i've been i just let this car go past i've been recasting the rods every sort of 20 to 30 minutes putting on a fresh pva bag just sort of roving them in close to mid-range what i think i'm going to do now is go a bit further out and see if they're out there i would suspect they're out there sitting in that bowl where it goes down real deep um but yeah, I'm not just here just to fish. I have got the camera kit with me and my main objective today was to get some winter images of the new products that got released earlier in the year. I haven't had a chance to get them out in this cold weather yet and today was the day. So I've got, like I say, I've got the crosscast traditionals down there on with the crosscast reels and I've got a few other bits as well um, that I've got a photograph today. So I'll be cracking on with that. I'm going to recast the rods now and then crack on with some more work. Well, needless to say that that session ended in a, a resounding blank. It was absolutely freezing, but I am back out here at Shearwater now. It's a good month on since that trip, and a lot's happened since then. We've had a couple of weeks of the lakes being frozen. It went consistently minus two, minus three for a good two weeks. And then we've had a lot of rain as well. The last two weeks have been non-stop rain and all the rivers across the UK are pretty much flooded. So I'm back here at Shearwater. I've got a bit of photography to do for work in about six or seven hours to try and bag ourselves a Shearwater carp. Well, I've got the first bite, and for me, it looks exactly like a typical bream bite, so. Certainly doesn't feel like a carp. Definitely seems like an upper bream. Bream number two. Well, it's been an hour or so since that last bream and I've decided not to go on to bigger baits at the moment just because I know the baits that I'm using have worked for me so well on the past on this particular lake. So I've decided to stick with my guns at the minute just to add some lunch there hasn't really been too much going on there's quite a few on at the moment but i haven't seen anyone catch anything at the moment for the time being hopefully it picks up like i say we've had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks and this is the first real clear day um, pressure is a little bit higher than i would like but it's sort of the only time that i had free to come out in and film this last bit of the vlog but i just wanted to go through i'll just flip you around a minute while the rods were out, I thought I'd just go through the last couple of months of fishing that I've had. And the answer is really, I haven't been a lot, not carp fishing anyway. I did manage a couple of sessions before Christmas. I went out once with Lewis um, for about 36 hours. Obviously it was a filming trip, but I did manage to get the rods out overnight. And here's what happened. Well, today I'm back down at Linear Fisheries on Bray's Nose 2. And I'm fishing here with Lewis. He's in the swim just behind me over that direction. 
he's on the point of B2 and I'm in the swim just next to him. We're actually here to film our new super spod rod. He's been using that today and that's what we've got filmed today. And then tomorrow, if all goes well, we're going to be filming a solid bag video, five tips on how to improve your solid bag fishing. So plenty to do over the course of the next two days. We're here for potentially two nights. It could be the one night, could be the two nights, depending on how well things go and depending on if we can get everything done in time. But I've just got my camp set up and it's just about to get dark. We've got about half an hour of sunlight left. Um, it's just come up to five o'clock now and it's about time that I'm going to get my rods out and try and find a spot out there. Hopefully it's not going to take too long to get a spot and then get some bait out and get the rods out for the night. Well, that's all three rods out on the areas I'm going to fish overnight. It's just about to get dark. I've got to get a bit of bait out as well. But that left-hand rod, I don't know if you can probably tell, is going off about 20, just under 21 wraps out there. There's a nice sort of raised gravel bar. It's only about three and a half, four foot deep from what I could tell on the marker float. And I think I've just put a dump the solid bag on top of it because I think that's definitely an area that the fish have been crashing in that sort of vicinity. I don't want to put any bait out because we've got birds um, that could potentially dive on it. And the other two rods I've got going out only in close, sort of 12 wraps. A real nice gravel spot, really clean. One of those spots that you just sort of, as soon as you find it, you're like, that's got to be worth a bite. So I'm going to see if that does anything over the night. I didn't have too much time. I would like to explore a bit further out. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I had a bit of a lead out there found some sort of all right spots but nothing that sort of compared to the spot that i found out at 12 wraps so that's what i'm going to go for tonight and hopefully that will produce a fish but time to get some bait out and then uh, time to get some dinner hopefully see you in the night well there's a spot mix that i'm going to be putting out over the spot i've got a mixture of 10 and 15 mil cc more lye system boilies that i've had soaking in the amino 365 for the last couple of weeks i've got about a kilo of sweet corn in there and I've got about half a kilo of this chili hemp, which is still a little bit frozen at the minute. So that should unfreeze by the time I come to spot it out. And that's the mix I'm going to be putting over the spot. And I'm going to start with probably about six bombs. And if I do get any action through the night, I'll probably top up again with another two or three bombs and hopefully get the action to keep on coming. But it's looking pretty good out there tonight. There's just a lot of fish moving, hopefully. Fingers crossed, myself or Lewis in the swim over there can get a fish. Well, a rather quiet night to report. I don't think Lewis has had anything either. My rods have not had a single beep all night. There's been fish crashing down in the bowl end and just as I've zipped, unzipped the bivvy and had a look out this morning, a fish did actually roll over my spot in close on the about the 12 wraps. It was definitely in that area. So I'm hopeful if I leave the rods out for enough for hours, something might happen, but the conditions have uh, took a turn for the worst. It's Yesterday it was a southwesterly blowing straight down into that bay. Now it's a, an easterly blowing straight back up the lake and it is a cold wind the temperature has definitely dropped overnight which is going to make it a bit more difficult than it already was i've got the kettle on there for the first brew and a bit of breakfast for the day give the rods an hour then i'll bring them in and then go around to lewis's swim and uh cracking on with the filming for the day and like i said we might do the effort we might do a second night and then in that case i'll get the rods out again but we'll see how today goes and see what our chances are well, we've wrapped up the filming for the afternoon. Just got a few little bits left to do. Unfortunately, still no fish. It's not looking too good for it either. All the fish we're seeing are down in the far end, down in front of uh, this peg here, sort of out in the round there. Nowhere near where we can actually fish to. But we're actually gonna head off very soon in the next sort of hour to two hours. And then we're gonna start packing up and get out before the gates lock. 
Unfortunately, that one ended in a blank, but my second trip, just before Christmas, I went to Coking Farm Fishery on Long Lake, and that was a little bit more productive than the session I had up at Linear. It is a chilly one this morning. It's the first day of a cold snap that we've got coming for the next five or six days. It got down to about minus one last night, which is the first time I believe this year that we've had it down into the minus figures for this coming into winter. And it's not meant to get much warmer throughout the day. I think it's like three or four degrees at the minute. It's not meant to raise much above five. So it's going to be a tough one considering the last few weeks we've had sort of temperatures just around the 10 degrees. I think it's really going to affect the fishing over the next few few days as the fish adjust um, and i'm on long lake at coking farm it's the best place i can think of we've got a chance of getting a bite today i'm only here for the day like i said to do some product photography um, so i've got three rods with me i'm going to get them out now and hopefully we bag ourselves a cup well you can tell we've had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks because the water level's up a good foot from what it normally is it's coming well over the bank it's usually you know a good six seven inches below that piece of wood there but what i'm going to do first of all is get some bait out i'm just going to fire single boilies with the catapult get the plopping sound going into the water i don't think there's going to be they're going to be up for a big feed today i think it's going to be picking off the odd fish that might be cruising over the spot but i want to get as much attraction in the swim as possible so that sound as i've sort of explained on here before on one of my previous vlogs um, which I believe was the first vlog I actually did I want that sound going through the water of each individual boy to go and plop 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 I think that adds just as much attraction sending vibrations through the swim getting them into the area to come and investigate what's going on and as you can probably tell while I'm holding the camera here that is going to be the area I'm going to focus I'm going to have two rods dotted off the island, one as tight as I can get, one just off, and then I'm going to have one rod just roving around in mid-water. And that sort of approach has done me so well on this lake before. I've caught so many fish doing that and targeting the islands up close on either of the islands, as close as you can get it, um, because those islands do undercut. The fish are do bury themselves into it and getting your bait as close as you can to those sort of openings, those crevices is your best chance of getting a bite on these islands. Well, it's the first bite of the day. There's definitely a fish on here. But that didn't take long. I've had the rods out probably 20 minutes. We've had our first bite. It doesn't feel big. Starting to pull back a little bit now though. It's gone over the upper line already. It's given a bit of a weird fight to be honest. It's quite a coming in quite easy. It's woken up a little bit now just pinged off the fin but yeah I've just introduced a little bit more bait on top of the area a few more single boilies just to get a bit more sound in the water and about five minutes later I started having a few line bites and then this one's absolutely melted off so pulled up tight it was a bit of a weird bite pulled up tight took a bit of line and went completely slack which is when I managed to get the GoPro on and then it just absolutely bolted up again. It's not actually a bad fish, it's just fought really weird. Usually I fight really hard in this lake. It looks like it could just be approaching the double mark. Which on a day like today, any bite is a, is a welcome reward. Bit of a bonus. I wasn't expecting too much today after that 
cold night last night. So it's a bit of a surprise. But I knew coming onto this lake would give me a good chance, or at least the best chance on the complex of getting a bite for the camera. And then there she goes. Lovely jubbly. Well, there we go. What about that then? First fish of the day, probably just into the double figure mark, but there's definitely a few fish on the feed there. I've seen a few bubbles coming up over behind the island. Just introduced a little bit more bait and bang, about five, 10 minutes later, it's absolutely rattled off with this one. Come on, the CC Moore live system doing it again. And it just goes to show just introducing a little bit of bait, even on these colder days, just to get a bit of sound in the water, some scent can often turn them on the feed. Let's get her back in there. Hopefully there's a few more on the cards. Well, they're definitely starting to get the winter colors now, darkening up lovely. And look at these reds in the tail, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, second bite. Absolutely ripped off again, middle rod, out towards that island. They're definitely holding out there at this time of year. It's kiting round to the right. Hopefully it doesn't tangle up my upper line. It's now swimming straight towards me. So far, both fish have been so weird in the fight. Usually it's a good old scrap, but both have charged in close and this one's keeping on coming. There we go. Well, the GoPro died about halfway through the fight and I've managed to land this absolute corker. About five, six pounds, fully scaled mirror. But when that reaches 20 pound, that is gonna be an absolute cracker. I'm gonna get a little bit more bait out just behind the island. Just add that little scaly. Just want to top up the area. I'm not trying to get these too accurate. Like I say, I'm just trying to spread the bait. And it's more about having the single bait hit the water, that plopping sound. Just to get the fish interested. And hopefully come in to investigate it. Well, I've got about 20 minutes of daylight left. The light is slowly starting to fade away and a little bit of rain is just started to fall. Just behind the camera is looking very, very dark. It looks like there's gonna be a bit of rain approaching at any time in the next sort of 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try and pack away as quickly as I can and try and avoid that. But today it's been a, quite a bit of a result, to be honest, if with considering the conditions, you know, minus one last night, um, in not much above two or three degrees during the day. I'm, I'm pretty happy to get the two bites. And that's why I visit lakes like these during the winter. You know, conditions aren't in your favour and I like to stack the odds as much as I can to get a few fish on the bank. So without further ado, get the rods in and then uh, make my way home. Well, the conditions are starting to change. We're starting to get some massive gusts come through now, creating a bit like an ocean. The wind generally isn't too bad, but when we get some gusts come through, they're coming down from this side of the lake all the way down here. And obviously it's massively exposed. Hopefully it might bring the carp on the feed. Here it goes. Here comes another gust. Oh, 
wind as well, that's a cold wind. Well, that's going to be it for today's session. It's been absolutely freezing since this wind picked up. It's been going for the last couple of hours and it has really dropped the temperature. I've got all the photography that I needed to get done for work and it's got about 20 minutes or 30 minutes before it gets dark, so that spells the end for me. And to sum up my winter fishing so far, it certainly hasn't been prolific, but thank you very much for watching it. Until next time, I'll catch you later.